Welcome to the second of two screencasts about hormones in pregnancy. This one is going to be about the third trimester. Now in the first one, I talked about the role that HCG had um, in maintaining a, a pregnancy in the early stages. So HCG, human chloralonic gonadotrophin, is produced by the placenta and it is, allows the corpus luteum which is the old follicle in the ovary, uh, f um, to produce some very, very key early pregnancy hormones. So the first one it, we're going to discuss is progesterone. So progesterone here. Now, that has many functions, and the role of progesterone really needs to be done in an entirely new screencast all of its own. But I'm just going to re just cap them, really, over recap them. And uh, first of all, it maintains... The endometrium so it prevents the endometrium being shed during a period or if you're pregnant by having a, a miscarriage. There are wide systemic effects and these are all designed to support the baby um, and the mother in carrying the baby so systemic effects and I shan't go into them any further here. But one very important role it has is it prepares the breast for lactation by maturing and stimulating the growth of lobular breast tissue. So I'll just put that there, and we shall come back to that. Another very important hormone which is produced are the estrogens. They also have uh, an effect, uh, they maintain the endometrium, but they also have a very important effect on the myometrium, which is the muscular layer of the uterus and it prepares it to give birth. One of the things it does is it sensitizes the myometrium to oxytocin and oxytocin is a hormone produced by the uh, posterior pituitary in, in uh, labor which allows the and it coordinates the contraction of the uterus during labor. Another change it makes in the myometrium to prepare for labor is it stimulates the increase in gap junctions between the muscle fibres. So it stimulates gap, gap junctions. And gap junctions are very important because they allow the coordination of contractions during labour so that the whole of the uterus contracts all at the same time to expel the baby. But so that labour isn't initiated early, it also has a role in relaxing the smooth muscle. So while there is a high level of oestrogen in, in the bloodstream, the smooth muscle of the myometrium is also relaxed so that the muscle contractions which occur prior to labour do not start to have, uh, uh, it's, do not initiate labour completely. And indeed, uh, also the oestrogens, they have an effect on the breasts, so they help mature the milk ducts. And they also help release prostaglandins. So put that there, prostaglandins. Now, prostaglandins have a role, again, in preparation for labour and during labour. And one of the roles they do is they soften the, uh, the, soften the cervix. So as you, um, a woman moves towards labour, her cervix becomes softer and therefore easier to, for it to... Um, to be uh, moved out of the way by the baby's head during contractions. So that's a quick gallop through oestrogens. And there's one more uh, very, very important hormone which is produced by the corpus luteum initially, which I didn't cover last time, and that is relaxin. And that also is important for the preparation of the uterus prior to birth. And one of the things it does, it also helps soften the cervix. It also relaxes ligaments and those ligaments particularly are the ones with the pelvic girdle so for example the ones um, posteriorly so the sacroiliac joints so I'll put those in, the sacroiliac joints and anteriorly the pubic symphysis. Pubic symphysis there. So that not only allows obviously an enlarging uterus to uh, 
to sit comfortably within the pelvis, but also the widening of the, the, this um, aperture allows the baby to then be born through the pelvis. So again, very important. So we've got, this is the early stages of pregnancy, um, but of course during the second and third trimester, the corpus luteum is allowed to degenerate because all these, um, all these functions are taken over by the, by the, um, y y the placenta itself. So that whole, that area just removes, so I'm going to rub that out because that doesn't, no longer exists in the second and third trimester. And instead, these really important hormones are then produced by the placenta. So relaxin is produced by the placenta, the estrogens are produced by the placenta, and the progesterones are produced by the placenta. But the placenta doesn't stop there. It's, it's a busy machine, and it also has other hormones it produces. So, for example, um, there's another hormone called the human chlorionic Monic. It's a somato mammo trophin. Trophin. Abbreviated, thankfully, <laughs> to HCS. And there's a the second name for exactly the same hormone. It's also known as human placental laxogen. So placental election, there we are. And those two names really give a clue as to what they do. Well, they are very much uh, involved in making sure that the fetus is nourished well in the, it, it, whilst it is uh, in the uterus, but also it's, it's continues to be nourished once, it, uh, once you've given birth to the baby. Because what it does is it promotes further development of the breasts. So it increases the effect of progesterone and estrogen on the breasts. So it prepares this area ready for birth. But also it has some really important effects uh, to, on, on the mother which allows more nutrition to be available to the baby. So the first one is that it induces, that's not really re readable, let's rub that out, try again. It induces a level of insulin resistance. So induces insulin resistance. So this raises blood sugar level. So blood sugar levels rise. And this allows more nutrition to be available to the fetus. So better nutrition. also has an effect on the fatty acids so it promotes the release of fatty acids and that's from the adipose tissue from the mother and that again leads to better nutrition and it also increases protein synthesis and this is in the mother and this allows the mother, you know, the uterus has to grow and it allows, you know, better maternal growth. So it increases protosynthesis. So altogether, it, uh, it helps both um, during pregnancy with um, giving a good nutrition to the baby, but also helps um, prepare the, ba the mother to feed the baby after birth. And there's one final set of really important hormones. And this is the corticotrophic releasing hormone. So I'm going to write that down. Corticotrophic releasing hormone. This is thought of really these days as a, the clock. So it appears to be that it is the the um, this hormone being released into the bloodstream um, sets a timing for when birth is initiated. And interestingly, women who have particularly high levels of this hormone in their bloodstream tend to be at risk of preterm labour. So it's very important. Now, you would have, may have seen this hormone before. It's abbreviated CRH, and it is also released 
in the mother, uh, in fact, but in everybody, by the hypothal hypothalamus. And it has a similar effect in the, f in, in the fetus. So this hormone basically causes the fetal uh, pituitary to release um, to release a hormone which then makes the fetal that's right then fetal adrenals to release cortisol and cortisol basically initiates birth so you see this feedback so you've got all these things happening which are going to prepare the mother for birth you've got the myometrium being prepared and sensitized to oxytocin and readied to uh, start to contract properly. You've got the prostaglandins, which are which are working with relaxin and softening the cervix. You've got the bod the body preparing itself to initiate lactation, and and all these things are being regulated by cortisol. Where, so as as the cortisol levels rise within the mother, you're seeing an increasing uh, you, you're seeing these. Um, um, all these hormones take place until finally labour is initiated. It also, this cortisol is also very important for the fetus because it is via cortisol that surfactants are produced to aid in lung maturation, which of course is very important maturation for, for the fetal survival once they've been given birth. So this is a very brief run through of uh, hormones in pregnancy. Um, there will be further uh, screencasts on this, pedest particularly pedestrian and actual labour and its initiation. Thank you very much.